Okay, chapter 13 is equity valuation. So uh, what is equity valuation? Equity is a valuation is valuing a firm or valuing a stock. So we're gonna work through uh, several models that uh, will enable us to value a firm under different scenarios. So we always start equity valuation discussions talking about uh, um, book value. Uh, book value is the uh, net worth of common equity according to their firm's balance sheet. But um, the thing you need to know about this, this is a historical value. It's not, it has nothing to do with market value. It's, um, it uh, includes depreciation. It doesn't uh, include uh, future growth opportunities for the firm or uh, other things of value the firm like uh, the name of the firm for example we'll talk about apple here shortly apple obviously has a very valuable name um, in addition um, apple has um, uh, products that are because of its name because of the the uh, skill set of apple that have unique values that are greater than other firms might uh, pro similar products at other firms. Um, so uh, book value has its limitations. Um, for one, the book value and the liquidation value of a firm may or most likely are different. So liquidation value is the net amount realized by selling uh, assets of the firm. The one, one thing to note is if liquidation value is greater than the market value of the firm, the firm is likely to be a takeover target because the assets can be sold off for more than the price of the stock or the value of the firm. Um, so another important item, replacement costs of firm's assets. Uh, we use um, Tobin's Q to analyze uh, replacement costs. Replacement cost of firm's assets. The, the Tobin's Q is the ratio of firm's market value to replacement cost. Uh, Tobin's Q is supposed to trend to one, uh, towards one over time. Um, if if it is greater than one, the uh, that is, means that firms uh, firms can enter the the and, and compete and make money because they can enter the firm at, enter the business at a lower cost than. Uh, um, then and gain value by doing so. Uh, table thirteen one compares Apple and Alphabet, which is Google. Uh, we have two very different firms. We start out with the price per share. Um, Apple's price per share in two thousand seventeen that one hundred forty two dollars and change versus eight hundred forty four dollars for Google. Um, Notice the uh, market capitalization. The market capitalization of Apple was $748 billion versus $589 billion for, for Google. But when we com compare the financial information, we see a very different story. Uh, sale, Apple sales $218 billion versus uh, $90 billion. So uh, 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 more than double. Um, however, the app price doesn't reflect that. Reason being is Apple's an established firm with established growth rate. Google's value is uh, very much based on uh, its expected future growth, uh, based on its expected um, potential. Um, uh, Amazon would, it would likely be a very, very similar story if we compared Amazon and Apple. Uh, Amazon's value is very much related to its future. Um, and we go down here to price earnings ratio. The price earnings ratio for Apple is 13.9. Again, that's a more traditional price earnings ratio. The um, price earnings ratio of Google at 30 represents a, a very high growth stock. Um, we look uh, um, look down here as far as profitability. We've okay, we've got Apple, the established firm. The return on equity is thirty four percent or over thirty four percent versus fifteen percent. 
again, it's all based on the expectations that Google will grow at a greater rate in the future. So, intrinsic value versus market price. Um, you know, if a stock has a uh, uh, intrinsic value, if you determine the value is greater than its market price, uh, you you know you should buy the stock. Um, if the opposite is true, you want to sell the stock. If the market price is greater than the intrinsic value, you, um, you know, it the, uh, means that that stock is overvalued. So first step here is calculate the uh, expected holding period return. We've calculated holding period returns uh, uh, earlier this semester. Uh, this in this Previously, we calculated them on an after-the-fact basis. This is expected holding period return. So we're, we take the expected dividend uh, plus the expected price at the end of the period minus the current price divided by the current price. So the dividend you receive plus the price expected price at the end of the period minus the price today divided by the price today. So so, expected dividend, ED1, expected dividend per share. Uh, P0 is the current price per share. At, uh, P1, expected price at the end of the year. So, for example, suppose you purchase a share of DAR Incorporated for $40 in January. You expect to sell it and for $42 in December. Expect to receive a dividend of two dollars and forty-two percent. What is your expected holding period return? So we take our formula, holding period return, going to be uh, we take our div expected dividend, two dollars and forty-two cents, plus the price we expect to sell it for, minus the current price divided by the current price. We get point one one zero five, which is eleven point zero five percent. So. Transit value represents the present value of the firm's expected future net cash flow dis discounted by the required rate of return. So market capitalization rate is just another name for required rate of return. It's a market consensus estimate of appropriate discount rate for a firm's cash flows. Um, I'm going to do a I'll work through some problems. Um, in a separate le lecture, um, and just so you know that uh, um, I will use R uh, the, for the required rate of return. Market capitalization rate is uh, uses K, so the formulas in the book will use K. K and R are interchangeable. So, intrinsic value uh, is we can calculate that. The first model we'll ha we have here. Uh, V0, the intrinsic value, uh, we'll also use P0. P0 and V0 are interchangeable. But in this most basic formula, we have the expected dividend plus the expected price divided by 1 plus the market capitalization rate, or K or R could be used here. Um, and if we have a longer than one period holding period, we would be zero would be the present value of all the dividends that we received. And then this same formula, the dividend at the in the last period plus the price in the last period. Again, we divide divide that by one plus the required rate of return to the power of whatever number of periods that that is. Next. Um, in the next lecture, we're going to introduce uh, dividend discount models. Uh, it's a formula for intrinsic value of a firm equal to the present value of uh, all expected future dividends. Uh, there are a few different versions of the dividend discount model, and we'll work through all of those in the following lecture. <laughs>